Hello and welcome to another edition of a guide to recognizing your saints. Insert graphic here. According to my trusty Saints Day calendar, today, the 21st of March, we must talk about San Benedetto, Saint Benedict of Norcia, which is in the province of Perugia in the region of Umbria. He was born in around 480 and died in around 547. His official feast day is actually the 11th of July, but traditionally he is believed to have died on the 21st of March, which is why we're going to talk about him today. Also, because I want to. So what is the best way to learn about saints? Well, you can read their hagiography. Hagio or hagio is the Greek for holy, so a holy biography. Or you can read a compilation, my trusty Dictionary to the Lives of the Saints, or a book like this, which is all about the iconography of saints. So those of you who know me know that I'm an art historian and I like to look at pretty pictures to learn about holy people. So because St. Benedict is kind of a big deal, there are many works of art dedicated to him. Let's look at a few together and learn about his life. Two of the most comprehensive life cycles can be found in Tuscany. In San Miniato al Monte above Florence, Spinello Aretino frescoed 16 scenes from the life of St. Benedict. In the Abbey of Monte Oliveto Maggiore in the Creti Senesi, Giovanni Antonio Bazzi, better known as Il Sodoma, painted the majority of the frescoes here in the Great Cloister. Both cycles trace Benedict's life from the moment he leaves home to study in Rome to his various spiritual awakenings and miracles performed to emphasize his saintly nature and then highlight the important contributions that he made to the church. An early miracle shows Benedict praying to God to repair a tray broken by his nurse Cirilla. Benedict never completed his studies in Rome, and here we see him taking a habit given to him by the monk Romano. He retreated to live a hermetic life. Note the new hairstyle, too. The solitary life was not without its challenges, and Benedict often found himself besieged by demons. Check out this little guy here, about to break a bell. <laughs> These other devils came from later scenes uh, in the cycle, but those in the bottom center are destroying a building, the one on the right was expelled from a possessed monk, and the one in the upper right, seen again here, tried to seduce Benedict away from the chaste life. He chucks himself into a thorn bush to resist the temptation, and though his body may have suffered some painful scratches, at least his soul remained pure. Benedict spent three years living in a cave in Subiaco near Rome, and he later founded 12 monasteries in that valley. His cave is known as the Sacro Speco, and it was visited by St. Francis of Assisi in the 13th century. And in the 15th century, Pope Pius II described it as a nido di rondini, or a swallow's nest, and I think you can see why by this picture. It continues to be an important sanctuary today, and if you're into spelunking, well, Benedict is the patron saint of speleology. Ben wasn't always so popular, however, and there were multiple attempts on his life. By making the sign of the cross over this glass of wine, for example, the glass miraculously broke and Ben was spared. Another time, a jealous priest tried to poison Benedict's bread, but he was on to him, and so he ordered a crow to take the bread far, far away so no one would be harmed by it. Of course, Benedict had many loyal followers, and the two best known are Morris and Placidus, also saints. Hearing that Placidus was in trouble one day, Benedict sent Morris out to rescue him. Afterwards, Morris realized that he had actually walked on water to save his friend. Not content to stay in Subiaco, Benedict traveled further south to Monte Cassino, founding an abbey there in 529. It was here where he wrote the rule, his most significant accomplishment, as it is the basis for Western monasticism. Monasticism, say that five times fast. It should be noted that Ben didn't actually found an order, and he wasn't a priest, but his rule was followed by later orders, such as the Benedictines, duh, the Cistercians, and the Carthusians. His monastic way of life emphasized community living guided by obedience, following the motto, Ora et Labor pray and work. Benedict knew life couldn't always be peaceful, and he even predicted the destruction of Monte Cassino. It was attacked multiple times, including in 581 by invading Lombards. But did Benedict also foresee the Battle of Monte Cassino? This allied victory of 1944 saw the complete destruction of the abbey. Fortunately, the priceless archives had been removed in 1943 and were thus salvaged. Benedict died at Monte Cassino on the 21st of March, 547, and his relics were translated, that's a fancy word for moved, to Fleury in France in 672. 
As is always the case with relics, there is some debate as to whether or not his remains are actually here, for during the bombing of 1944, a tomb was discovered with two bodies inside, believed to be those of Benedict and his sister, Saint Scholastica. So, how can we recognize Benedict? Well, it's fairly simple. He is usually depicted as an older man with a long white beard, and he often holds a staff and a book representing his rule. Sometimes he accompanies other saints contemplating a mystical event, such as in these examples of the coronation of the Virgin or the crucifixion. Here he just wears the black habit of the original order, but in other artworks he wears the white habit of the reformed order. Can you spot him in these two altarpieces? <laughs> I'll help you out. Now you can clearly see the staff and the open book. One last image shows Ben giving the rule to the Olivetans. Their order was founded in the 14th century, nearly eight centuries after Benedict died, but we can sense the spiritual connection between the saint and this order here. Benedict is connected to everyone in Europe, too, because in 1964, Pope Paul VI declared him to be the patron saint of Europe. More were added later, as you can see. I hope that you have enjoyed looking at those works of art and learning about the life of St. Benedict. Quite a man indeed. I will see you soon for another edition of A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. Grazie. Arrivederci, grazie a tutti. Ciao!